maintaining marine engines and fishing boats a step by step guide for fishers of bangladesh bangladesh has a long coastline of over 700 kilometers fishing is an important activity the marine waters harbor a rich biodiversity of fin fish and shellfish species wooden nowkas have been used for fishing for ages most of them undertake multi day fishing using a variety of gear such as gill nets set back nets and show scenes fishing boats are propelled by marine engines of varying horsepower while fishing in offshore waters engine problems often occur engine failures can endanger the safety of fishers most boat captains or majis have little or no knowledge of engine troubleshooting or repair with poor communication equipment on board many boats with engine failure drift to distant waters result severe hardships even deaths this film is a simple step by step guide to the marine engines commonly used in fishing boats in bangladesh it gives you a daily checklist and some do's and don'ts We are now in Cox's Bazar, a major fishing center in Bangladesh. Let's go to Jalal Engineering Workshop. Naushad and his other Maji friends are waiting for Islam Bhai, the service engineer. He will tell them about the upkeep of their water-cooled diesel engines. Assalamu alaikum. friends let me first familiarize you all with the engine and its important parts the inboard engines installed in your fishing boats are mostly water cooled multi cylinder marine engines fitted with a gearbox this is the engine's diesel tank and the cap assembly and these are your diesel storage tanks There are two fuel filters. One filter is fitted on the bottom of the tank and the other on the engine. What you now see is the air inlet manifold which supplies air for combustion. Engine oil is poured from here. This is the fuel pump and this is the fuel injector. both are important components of the engine i will now show you the lube oil filter assembly this dipstick is used to measure the engine oil level the oil pressure gauge which you see here should always be maintained in top condition this is the gearbox and oil is filled in the gearbox from here The gearbox dipstick should be used for measuring oil level in the gearbox. Friends, you know it is very important to keep the engine cool when it is running. Let us now see the arrangements for the cooling of the engine. This is the sea cock. And these are the pipelines for water circulation. What you now see is the engine sea water cooling pump and the water filters. This is the engine oil cooler. This bilge pump is used to drain water from the hull. You must have seen that in many boats the bilge pump is driven by the engine. But in some boats hand pumps or even foot pumps are used coming back to the engine this is the starting handle and these are the decompression levers 
The engine oil drain plug is located here. This is the gearbox oil drain plug. What you now see is the exhaust manifold and silencer. Stern gear and the propeller shaft and the coupling connecting gearbox flange and the shaft. Friends, before you start your fishing trip, it is very important to do a thorough checkup of the different parts of the engine. While doing this, you must also ensure that you have the necessary spares on the boat. Let us first begin with the checklist. The first check. Ensure that there is enough diesel in the tank and also enough diesel on board to cover the fishing voyage. Always use a clean dipstick to check the fuel level in the tank. This would ensure that no dust particles enter the tank. The dipstick has two markings to show the minimum and maximum recommended levels. Similarly, check the oil level in the gearbox. Oil in the gearbox should be maintained at the maximum level. If engine oil or gearbox oil is close to the minimum mark, top it up. Always use the right grade of engine oil. When pouring fuel into the engine, always use a funnel and a clean cloth filter. This will prevent entry of dust particles into the tank. When you fill the fuel tank through a pump, place a clean cloth on the mouth of the pipe to prevent dust particles entering into the tank. You all know that the running engine creates vibrations and these can loosen the nuts and bolts. Therefore, prior to a fishing trip, check all nuts and bolts including the bed bolts and the foundation bolts. Also, tighten the banjo fittings to ensure that there is no diesel leakage and that all pipes are airtight. Tighten the water connection hose clips to avoid any water leakage. Also, make sure to tighten the suction hose in the water pump. If a belt is fitted on the bilge pump, it should have adequate tension. The exhaust manifold and silencer nut should also be tightened to avoid smoke in the engine room. Check the alignment of the coupling and tighten all the coupling bolts. Important! Ensure that the exhaust pipe and silencer are lagged to prevent burn injury. Tighten the battery connections. Apply grease to avoid damage to terminals. Check the remote control accelerator and its linkages to ensure their free operation. Do a check on essential spares and tools. Make sure that all important items are in the spare tools kit. Finally, always check and try out the water circulation system which can be seen from the water outlet pipe. Once you return from the fishing trip, do not forget to clean the engine, gearbox and other associated components thoroughly. Check the propeller for any damages. Ensure that the lock nut is fully tight when the boat is dry docked or not in use. Use a split pin to lock your propeller in place once the nut has been tightened. Let us now look at the fuel system of the engine. Fuel from the storage tank is supplied to the main fuel tank by operating the hand pump. The fuel enters the filter through gravity, which in turn supplies clean fuel to the fuel pump. The pump supplies fuel at a high pressure to the injector. Any excess fuel is drained back to the fuel tank. This is the fuel filter. When you unscrew the fuel filter, you will see that the fuel filter is made out of sheet metal with a cleaning system. 
The screw on the top should be rotated regularly to clean the soot accumulated on the filter. This will drain the soot from the drain plug, which is located at the bottom of the bowl. From time to time, dismantle the filter and clean the discs. This will ensure supply of clean fuel to the engine. Once it is cleaned, assemble the filter element in the correct manner. Check the free rotation of the cleaning blades before closing. Insert the filter element in the right manner. While retightening the filter body, ensure that the O-ring is not damaged. Tighten all the four screws uniformly. Friends, let us now come to the do's and don'ts. Keep fuel clean. It should be stored in a clean container. Take your toolbox with the right tools and essential spares during the fishing trip. Make sure that the accelerator linkages are well lubricated and move freely. Do check the free flow of water from the outlet pipe. Clean the sea cock regularly. Maintain the exhaust system properly to avoid accidents. Do check the oil pressure gauge during operation. Always apply a clean film of lube oil on metal parts to prevent them from corrosion. Engine parts such as fuel pump and injector should be handled only by trained mechanics. Use the right spanner to tighten the engine foundation bolts. Never use a chisel and a hammer. Do not use the decompression lever to stop the engine. After proper tightening of the propeller nut, use a split pin to lock it. Never work on an engine when it is running. Regularly check engine alignment to avoid damage to the propeller shaft. Check the bilge pump regularly for efficient operation. Check the batteries at regular intervals and recharge them when required. Always keep the engine room clean and tidy. I will now recap some of the most important steps for you to follow. Follow the checklist. Use clean fuel. Carry essential tools and spares. Carry out periodic maintenance. Protect the engine from corrosion and other elements. Friends, when you are out at sea, the engine is your lifeline. A properly maintained engine will rarely give you trouble. It will bring you back home safe. So, follow the steps I have outlined. I am sure your fishing trips will be smooth and without hassles. Inshallah, I wish you all safe and happy fishing.